Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the School of Radiance podcast. I'm your host, a humble human on a mission, here to help you both look and feel your best. In today's episode, we have kind of a a neat focus here. We're going to help you learn how to be more attractive, how to maybe even get some of your finances on point, because at the end of the day, the more peace we have in many different aspects and layers of our life, just the better you're going to look, because the way that we feel is a direct reflection of also how we look and vice versa. So I'd love to tell you a little bit about today's guest, and she's actually hosting a summit. And summits these days are a fantastic way to learn from leading experts on the topic that you're interested in. It's kind of like going to a conference without the travel and hotel expenses and kind of getting out of the house and out of your routine. This is a great way to get high level information online in a summit format. I really have enjoyed being on hundreds of summits over the years and highly recommend if you're new to the summit world to definitely Uh, take part in Valerie Sims, and we're going to be sharing her information in the show notes below of the Hormone Harmony Summit. And you can register over at hormoneharmonysummit.com. And that's also in the show notes. So I'll tell you a little bit about today's guest who I had the pleasure of meeting when she interviewed me on the summit. So I have some really great new information in there. So if you want to register just for my talk, I do actually warmly encourage you because we talked a lot about just really how we can show up in various different aspects and layers in our lives in a more beautiful, radiant way. And I just really connected with Valerie and just really excited to have her and share what she's doing with you all here on the show. You're going to get a lot of value out of today's podcast. Valerie Sims is a professional life coach who specializes in guiding her clients from zero to hero using her mastery of balance formula. Valerie spent the first half of her career earning a bachelor's of business administration, financial planning, Canadian securities and insurance licenses. As Valerie's focus has always been on achieving a balanced lifestyle, she left the investment industry in 2011 and earned her certified yoga teacher, Reiki practitioner and certified master coach certifications and began to combine both her business acumen and holistic teachings into the mastery of balance formula, guiding clients across the USA and Canada to balance sustainable and productive lifestyles. Now you might think, what does this have to do with beauty? Well, you do need to be grounded in your life (laughs) to be beautiful and Of course, there are some funds required to get access to great skincare and rejuvenation and things that are going to support you in your life. So it's not just about about wishy-washy, you know, body, mind, spirit, energy. It really is about the very concrete things that we need to think about in our lives as radiant humans. So welcome to the show, Valerie Sims. It's great to have you here. And I'd love to kick things off with the unlimited dollar question. What is radiance to you? Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for that great introduction. I love this question about radiance because for me, radiance is your presence, your state of being. It's how you look in your eyes and how you look out of your eyes. And that is my, my version of radiance. So when I feel I'm in the presence of someone radiant, it's someone who is calm, they're balanced, even if if everything is going on around them, they have that presence of spirit inside them and it radiates out. Doesn't matter if it's a ponytail and a ball cap or you know their their vast outfit, it's it's a state of being that radiates from the inside to the out. Yes, thank you for sharing that. And Valerie, when I met you, when you interviewed me for the Hormone Harmony Summit, you work with uh, Dr. Annika Baca too, which is great. She's been on the show many, many times, leading expert in her own rights. And there's just something about you. And there was this familiarity. And what I'm getting to here is the more we are operating in this really high vibe, beautiful, pure, clear, high integrity with intention way and keeping your body, mind, spirit, energy pure via 
some practices like biohacking and using clean skincare and eating right and all of those things, you just kind of emanate this different vibe. It's very unique frequency. And when I come across people who, who have this, there's usually something for me to learn. I was talking to somebody recently about what I get out of hosting a podcast and I've done about a thousand interviews, been on and hosted. And You know, there's always something to learn or some new connection to be made or an introduction to somebody that can be really positive and constructive in your life. So the more you learn how to show up in a really clear, concise, calculated, positive, radiant way, it's going to be easier for you to make friends. And community really is from confidence. And I'd love to hear from you, Valerie. What are some of the things that you see your clients struggling with? Um, And in particular, especially women, 25% of listeners are men too, because you've worked with a lot of people with finances. So how can taking care of your finances contribute to reducing stress and promoting mental well-being as we age? The, uh, The thing about taking care of your finances, it is a learned behavior. I don't I don't know if anyone comes out of the womb being boom, I got this, you know, it it is a learned behavior. And I think a lot of times, uh, it not so much in my family, but these finances were never discussed. We, so it really is in my opinion, a form of self care to be financially literate. And I don't mean it's intimidating. Uh, you know, we get these visions of people on the stock market floor and they're trading or I don't know if you've been at parties and there's sometimes a group of people and they're talking about their stocks and this and that and what have you. And it, it, if it's not your lane, it, it is intimidating. So that's why I started doing what I did. And one of the reasons I started was because of a man that came in. He was a client and he was a high level, um, I, I'm Canadian and RCMP are our, our uh, national police investigators, what have you. So this, this man had seen it all. He had seen the horrific, you know, enterprises of criminals and he had been involved in investigations and he came in to see me and he was unbelievably difficult, unbelievable, like unbelievably difficult. So finally, I just put my pen down. I sat back and I said, why are you here? I, I, I can't help you. He admitted to me in that moment of vulnerability that, you know what? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm trying to control. I'm scared. So I realized that that was a, a opportunity for me. It wasn't a failure. It was an opportunity for me to look at my language, not assume and start to educate my clients. So I actually almost became a coach many, many years ago, long before 2011. So it was always a coaching process. So to me, it is self-care. The earlier we start, the better, but starting today is better. Yeah, absolutely. And this word perfection doesn't exist. Perfection doesn't exist, everybody. It's persistence and strategy and diligence and discipline that are really going to kind of get you to where your goal is. So you touched on something really interesting here. So typically something like finance is a little bit more in the thinking and analytical side of things, which is more the masculine. Mm -hmm. And men are really good at about 80% in that and then 20% in the feminine. Women more in the creative flow kind of state, nurturing state 80% of the time. And the thinking and analytical about 20%. But we all need to be able to have a grasp on what our monthly expenses are, what our budget is, what our budget allows for, for things like skincare and rejuvenation, because all of these things to better yourself could be even supplements or the type of food that you eat, the activities that you do, your gym membership. You want to be able to do things in a sustainable way so that when you're doing things to benefit yourself, say even working with a practitioner, my advice is to add maybe one thing at a time a month that's going to be working with your budget and lifestyle and your values. Because I've seen this in the rejuvenation space where people just 
decide to do everything at once. And then they actually have a little bit of stress and anxiety related to how much it is. Certain things in the clinic for rejuvenation range from anywhere from $500 to $5,000. And then there's plastic surgery too. And the same with biohacking, it can get expensive with air purifiers, water purifiers, all sorts of stuff. But to really just kind of start with the basics and then maybe one thing at a month at a time in a month, adding new things. So it doesn't add to sort of like that stress layer. I just kind of wanted to touch on that. So that's so good of you to kind of sit back and say, Hey, how can I actually serve you? Because being of service and doing it in integrity is going to be something that's going to build your confidence, which then allowed you to build your confidence in moving more into what I would say, the health and nurturing side of things, which is a very feminine. So I think that that was a good move for you. Well, it was interesting how um, because of a, a situation, it was uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable how he was able to teach me and it allowed me to go forward and, and teach others. And, and you mentioned about budgeting. And I, you, you'll see so many headlines, budgeting doesn't work, diets don't work, you know, it, you're right, it's consistency, but we need to have awareness of where our money is. So you can call it budgeting, you could call it, you could call it a tree or the tooth fairy, it doesn't matter. You do have to sit down and look at what your fixed costs are every month, you know, you, you have to pay your rent or your mortgage. Uh, you know, then you get to other fixed costs, maybe loans, and then you, you need to break it down into some that you have more control over. Utilities, maybe going out for dinner would be something you could uh, amend quite a bit. Utilities, not so much, depends on usage. But you, you get to see that you are participating in your financial structure. It's so many people tend to say, oh my goodness. Caught up to me. Well, well no, it, it it's been happening. So I try to, you know, with grace. The goal is to see what's going on, and then see areas where you do have flexibility or control. So that I'm all over the biohacking. I am looking at the the water uh, treatment now for my home and the. Well, after our conversation, I'm super yeah. curious because you interviewed me on the show. What are what are some of the things that you got excited about when you heard me talk about some of these new things to add to better yourself. Well, I, I love this biohacking and, and I actually didn't really have, a, yeah, I wasn't really cognizant of what it was, to be honest. I've heard of air purifiers and, and water. However, I didn't have them in my home. So I like the idea of the air purifier. Um, you don't have to do your whole home. You could do a portable one. You can start out small. So I like that. Lots of different dusts and molds and toxins in your home that'll help seep those out. And then the water, I actually uh, just drink tap water. I put it through the Brita filter and I thought I was doing a good thing and I can do better. So I'm looking at one that would go under my sink so that there's a separate tap for it. And then that uh, you know filtered water is available for me. And speaking of radiance from the inside, that will assist in me being radiant and you know promoting radiance to the world is if I'm starting from the inside. And I learned that from you because yes, we can do lots of great things on the outside. However, if we're not supporting it internally with our mitochondria, see, I was listening, <laughs> and all our all the different cells in our body that all work together. You know, it, really, we think of how we're designed. It's pretty amazing. So that is what got me first with bio biohacking. Oh, I love that. Um, I did a one-on-one -on -one consult with Tasia yesterday, and we were talking about what she's doing in her home and skincare and what her skin goals are. Um, I, I am still doing one-on-one -on -one consults, FYI. My availability has just changed a little bit. So for those of you tuning in, definitely uh, book your one-on-one. -on -one. I'm happy to meet you at a time that works for us. And Tasia, she was using her fridge filter. So if you're listening, you're like, oh, I drink my water out of my fridge filter. Those are right places for mold. So I just wanted to mention that. And 
have a memory of when I was looking at a place in Florida because I was there for, I was a little bit of a snowbird last year, which was super fun. Um, I looked at this place and I looked at the fridge filter spout and there was visible mold on it. They're just like, do not drink the water from your fridge filter. I have some great resources on my biohacking page at the school of radiance.com, everybody. So I just wanted to mention that. The other thing I wanted to mention was leaky energy. So you're talking about finances. Some of the ways that our financial energy can kind of get leaked out is really buying things you don't need. Mm -hmm. So depending on the time of year, like with the holidays, so many people just spend money on these little decorations that at some point are just going to go in a landfill or are going out for coffee all the time or buying fast fashion or cheap accessories that are full of metal alloys that you're going to be putting in your ears. Like you really have to think about what you're buying and if you're going to get a lot of kind of cost per use out of it, is it good quality? Is it going to last a long time? For, so for style tips and where I actually get a majority of my clothing um, in an economical way, I kind of get into that more in my membership as well. But I wanted to mention that if you have leaky financial energy, you probably have leaky energy in other places in your life as well. And to really make sure that you are living your purpose and you are achieving your goals and showing up as the best version for yourself and those who you care about in your life and in your professional capacity too, sometimes we do need to have these good boundaries mm -hmm. around what we're doing, where we're doing it, who we're around, what we're spending money on, and not to fall prey to purchasing things out of fear. So if you see ads for different things, you're like, oh, I need that so I can be cool or fit in or everybody else is buying this or I keep seeing this or there's this new magical beauty supplement or this brand new rejuvenation treatment that just came out that I'm starting to see uh, lots of ads for. Just like take a pause and feel free to reach out to me. Send me an email because I want to know what ads you're seeing, especially this time of year too. So speaking of transitions, and for those of you who have been longtime listeners, I've gone through a massive transition in my life over the last few years. I've kind of been through the ringer myself, mm -hmm. but I'm happy to report that I'm here better than ever because sometimes when we go through life shifts, like going through divorce, which we're going to talk about, what happens is... When we desire something, like we pray about something, we desire something, it's going to, you know, God isn't just going to give something to you on a silver platter. You do need to actually make space to receive those things. And as a woman, that's a great energy to be in to, to receive. And so there's some diligence. There's it kind of like, you kind of have to be willing to receive it to make space for these things. So transitions are tough. And they come with their own set of challenges because it's just kind of flowing into a different life stage, like perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause, retirement, kids, the kids going to school, the kids moving out, all sorts of different things we go through. So it's just remaining grounded in all of that. So my question for you, Valerie, is going through a divorce is, is a stressful event. So is any other type of event that I just listed off. These are some of the you know, main events, including deaths of loved ones and things like that, and also births of little ones. <laughs> How can working with a divorce coach offer support during this process? Like, say, for example... How would this differentiate from, say, a therapist or a lawyer? Because I know this is something you're really passionate about sharing and supporting women during this time. Yes. So first off, I am not a therapist. Many of the women, and I know there's a lovely gentleman watching. I have, I work with women only. It's just what I've chosen. No, there's no other reason than it just aligns with me. However, many, many, many people have a therapist as well. And, and that's dealing with the trauma side of what has happened. Uh, that's what's happened 10 years ago, five years ago, last week. When you work with a coach, it's more about moving forward. It's more about assessing where you are with your values. You know, a pillar of money is a big one with me and rebuilding and empowerment and, and planning for your future. And when you work with a lawyer, there's a, a, there's 
legal. There's legalities that differ from state to state, province to province. There's issues. Laws are changing daily. It's all on on the, you know, whatever happened in the past divorce case now becomes the new reality. So that is not an area that I am at all licensed to advise in, and nor do I want to. I come in in the center and be the supportive part working towards the future. And a lot of times uh, a therapist will send me a note like, hey, this is something I want you to work with as well. And I accept that fully. It's a partnership. So going forward, I like to to put it all together. And, and it works beautifully because I find a lot of times, and I know myself, I'm divorced. And there's a point where our family and friends just don't they can't hear it anymore. They, they want to have their friendships with us. They want to have, they want to go forward with us as well. However, we, we keep, we keep staying stuck in the past and not moving forward. You know, there could be some people that maybe will have that conversation with you. Hey, we got to stop talking about this, or they might avoid you or, and then, then you're hurt. And it's just a lot of miscommunication. So when you work with a coach, I'll listen to you. I'll help you become grounded. I'll help you start to move forward in your life so that you're coming energetically and you're attracting great people in your life and you're maintaining the great people in our life as well. So that's primarily how I look at it going forward. And it works beautifully. It really does. I come from a very philosophic uh, background when I do my coaching. My coaching is integral coaching. Ken Wilber was a philosopher and he put this together. So I try to look at where the client is orienting from and then work with them. I'm different for every client. Have to be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we all have different upbringings. We all have different DNA and all sorts of different things, if, you know, our, our specific frequency. So that's great to identify what the individual's framework is and then how to best support that in that container. And kind of one of the things about working with a coach and being coachable is that individuals like Valerie and myself are lovingly going to point things out mm -hmm. that we observe that might be a blind spot for you. And a really good partner when you're in a great relationship and marriage, they're going to be doing this too mm -hmm. in an effort to help you become your best version. But you also have to make that decision, have an awareness for you to become your 10 out of 10 version of yourself. We're going to be talking about attraction and all that <laughs> stuff and um, finding a partner actually uh, shortly because it's related to this, especially when women go, men and women go through various transitions, especially like this. So you mentioned a couple of things, moving forward, future focused. What's really important is also to not get wrapped up in the what ifs. So say, for example, you are planning something, you desire to have some achieve some type of goal. It's not so much of like the what ifs, the, the problems that could arise from this, because what ifs is actually one of the biggest ways for you to kind of leak out your energy. It's staying more focused in the present moment and some of the tasks that you need to accomplish, like baby steps, in order to achieve your goals. And when you make those baby steps, it's going to help build confidence. Um, so I do want to just kind of encourage that to really be in the present moment as well and not be like too future focused because what I've learned is in during transition, when you pay attention to the present moment, you're very aware of your surroundings and things that are happening and shifting in your life. That's actually where the journey is. That's actually where the best stories and moments are. The more you tune into your surroundings and being in the present moment, you're going to learn how you deal with certain things. Um, and kind of speaking to this, when we go through life shifts, there's going to be changes in our hormones. It's just going to happen. A stressful event happens. Your adrenaline, your adrenaline surges, your cortisol surges. And so I'm actually drinking some Organifi Pure, a little bit of elderberry syrup and some honey. I like honey to kind of keep that cortisol down or dates, for example, are also great even after a workout, right? You get a surge that way. So just having that awareness of the state you're in when you're in transition and just how to really be in that peaceful, calm state. An easy thing here is when you are in that state is to be still also, you know, move your body and work out. 
but to also notice how fast you're speaking and sort of like with the intensity of at which you're using your voice, because that's actually a really good hack. If you just slow down your speech and if you're talking to somebody else, if they're talking a million miles a minute too, you don't want to match them. You want to stay in your piece because that's going to be conducive to you moving through this transition period, whatever that transition may be, and help to say, reduce things like adrenal fatigue um, that can accompany shifts. So it's keeping up with that self-care is first and foremost when you're going through things moving slowly. That's also great too. Making sure you're getting lots of rest, good nutrition, really limiting the alcohol and not doing things like escapism, Um, but focusing on constructive things like here on the School of Radiance podcast, joining my membership as well, personal development, reading great books, and not like distracting yourself with drugs, alcohol, and just mindless shows as well to try and turn your brain off. Read a great book, read the Bible, pray, meditate, all these different things, right? They're so simple, but we forget just how how constructive and calming some of these things could be. Do you have any comments on what I just well, mentioned? Well, I, I, I do love that there, uh, I am a yoga teacher and I teach yin yoga and it's a very much a somatic practice. So my reason for doing it, I've always practiced yoga. I've practiced yoga with my mom since I was a little girl. So the slowing down, the faster, the more energy you need, the slower you, you need to be in a balanced proportion, exactly what you said. So if, you know, if I've had, um, I've had a lot of marathon runners as clients for my yoga and they find it, they find it hard to be still. However, that is where the beauty comes and i often will tell people that when they're going through different visualizations but the one i like is when you look at calm water you can see through to the bottom it's still you know if you step in it you know where you're going it's still and it's easy to assess if you see waves in the water and it's really rough you can't see the bottom. You don't quite know where you're going. So you're better off waiting sometimes for that stillness before you move ahead, which aligns to exactly what you say, being in the moment. So I love that. It's it's very important. So to do a yoga practice, a breath work practice, either do some self Reiki. So many, so many uh, practices. There's so many crystal ball healing, you know, with sound healing, so many different things that you can start to incorporate. And they'll just, they just bring your nervous system down. And then you're able to make really good decisions. Let me ask you, Rachel, have you ever made a decision when you're wild, you know, all, all energetic and all maybe upset? You probably didn't make the best decision for yourself. Yeah, well, yeah, that's when I made one of the worst decisions of my life. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. So sorry. <laughs> oh no, you know what? It's part of my story. It's part of my journey. We're all humans. Um, so if there's one thing that I learned, it's to make decisions as a woman, actually going through all the stages of your cycle. Oh. When you're making a decision. And at a time when you are very grounded and you have patience. Mm -hmm. However, I'm also an entrepreneur and I know you are as well. And there's also this element of fast action. Okay. That's a great opportunity. That's going to save me a ton of time and money. I'm going to act fast because I know, and that feels really good to me that that's something worthwhile to invest in whether it's the strategy, but also the person who's behind it and kind of the energy and the vibe and, and um, how they show up and on service and how that can add value to my life or my business and things like that too. So yeah. there's also that element too, right? But that's just, because you have that practice of slow, that when you are required to do something fast, it, it's good because you're balanced. 
Yeah, and it's it's efficient. So if you're going through life like the 40-something-year-old perimenopausal corporate woman who's in adrenal fatigue with the smartwatches, with the AirPods, not working out enough, not eating properly, too much coffee, nicotine, all that stuff, um, you're, you're going to suffer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I say this lovingly because I see a lot of women who get stuck in this. And guess what happens? Your relationships aren't going to be great. <laughs> Because you mentioned divorce, and I think it's it's very relevant that, you know, maybe, maybe, just maybe, if we kind of get back to more of the basics of how we operate and the different gifts that we provide each other in a relationship, I think that a lot of relationships could be uh, repaired and, you know, take the ego out of the way and, and think of things as a team, but both parties have to be willing mm-hmm. to do that. I love that you mentioned breath work. It's very grounding. One of the things for me going to the gym is moving. At the, I like to go at the end of the day, and I, it's just my happy place. I, I've had people tell me, it's like, oh, you just look so like happy and at peace when you're doing these like moves and stretches and all sorts of things. And, you know, you're totally in the zone. Didn't want to disturb you sort of thing. So I think that's sweet because when we operate this way, other people are going to notice, be like, oh, there's something different about that one. And we're going to be talking a little bit about attraction and dating in just a second here. So I'm kind of laying that that uh, foundation for that. But moving the body is super grounding. So if you're kind of in your head too much, move your body, move that energy, get outside and ground in in nature and offload that positive ion accumulation from you being on your technology and inside, you're going to feel better in your own body and in your own mind. And you will show up better for those who you engage with personally and professionally. The patience piece is so key and something that I really had to put a lot of intention on. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we're in transitions, we're like, why isn't this happening? Or a financial goal, for example, it's like, oh, it's taking so long to get here. I feel like there's a setback. What's going on? Am I doing something right? There's sometimes this opportunity in life to notice that uh, redirection can sometimes be a form of protection. Mm -hmm. You said that recently. And that's really key. So just kind of trust the process, have faith, know that you're making decisions and operating and level of high integrity, the more, the less stressed out you are, the better you're going to look and the slower you're going to age. You're also going to be less likely to go through adrenal fatigue, hormone disbalance, dysregulation, and lose your hair. Not to mention, you will also maintain a healthier body composition, all of which will make you more attractive. By the way, one of the most attractive things for women is to, I want you to listen very closely here, ladies, is being at peace with yourself and in your life, even though life is life, stress is kind of being alive. When you emanate this beautiful, peaceful positivity and also high degree of, of intelligence and emotional intelligence, all of that, that's actually one of the things that's going to make you very attractive. It doesn't matter what your skin looks like. It doesn't matter how you styled your hair or your outfit. As long as you're carrying yourself with this with this quality, which is very feminine as well, and that will make you more attractive. Um, the other thing is having great hobbies. So you mentioned other things that are going to be helpful in transition times. You mentioned music. I play bik- a piano. I almost said bikini. I think I'm on holiday. <laughs> um, uh, music, piano, guitar, those are all things I do. Uh, I have a couple bowls too. And when my my friend Alicia brought her daughters over, I have them play on the piano and the little bowls while we're chatting and doing some other stuff too. It's, but it's like let your inner child play a little bit and have fun. Have fun in life. Even though you might feel like the world is coming down around you, make sure you're having fun with your friends, with your family, doing some of the things that you enjoy because all of these things are also part of our key determinants of health that Mm -hmm. contribute to longevity and doing fun things are really good for your hormones because you, and with great people, because you're going to be getting that oxytocin and dopamine um, kind of exposure and stimulation, if you will. So let me give a tip for that. Oh yeah. Go for it. Just because you know how people go into an airport and they lose their mind. You know what I mean? They, they lose <laughs> when you're 
going through a stress, you, you lose your mind sometimes. Yeah, totally. So absolutely. What I get women and my clients to do either on their phone in their app or on a recipe card or like, a, a, this is my post-it note. It's a duck. It's so silly looking. Cute. Write down everything that you would do if you had some time to yourself. Whether it's organizing the spice drawer, whether it's painting the inside of the closet, whether it's alphabetically putting your soup cans in order, in the, what just little things, organizing that ribbon, you know, or putting those shoes, whatever you want to do, or getting a, a paint by number. I keep a paint by number. You can buy beautiful ones that are Monet's. And when I'm stressed or what have you, I start painting this paint by number. I just make a list of them and have it somewhere. So when that is happening, you can get your list. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Oh, yeah. it Because you, you might not think about it just the way our brain works. And hormones. So yes. what you're talking about there is eyes on the target, accomplishing mm -hmm. a goal. That is, if you're in a stressful situation, having the ability to access noradrenaline. So that's why I yeah. love doing cold, cold exposure for many years. Lesson one in the membership is like an hour and a half deep dive on free things you can do in your life for your hormones, by the way. Oh, oh good. Um, okay. That's good to know. So when you're, this is great. I'm so glad you mentioned this because when we go through stuff, we can go into adrenaline and cortisol surges which is terrible for our collagen and elastin. Elevated cortisol destroys collagen and elastin. It ages you very quickly. So what you just did there was such a great constructive thing that everybody can do. Fun post it. The fact that you have a duck on that, like how silly is that? Like find something cute and silly. Just have more fun with life, everybody. Stop taking life so gosh darn serious and enjoy life every single moment, like accomplishing a task. So you accomplish a task, it's going to build your confidence and you're going to be more in that noradrenaline state, which is clear, concise, focused, and um, very intentional with what you're doing with your energy. So I think that's super fun. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. And, and plus, if you are on your own, space has been opened up for you. You talked to, we talked a little bit about that. So you, you start to fill it up with creative endeavors that are satisfying to your soul. And you, this is beginning to increase and elevate your energy, your vibration, instead of maybe crying or being sad. And I think particularly if a woman has children and they go with the ex for the weekend, that's a tough, tough time. So you get out your little duck pad and these are the things you're going to do. Because when your children come back to you, you want to be happy. You want to welcome, you want to have high energy and be happy. And so it just starts training yourself to fill up that space with something kind of cool, even if it is a yellow duck. Yeah, it's adorable. And the other thing are, are words, because um, we're going to be, we're talking about a little bit more now, fostering more like positivity. And we're also going to talk about fostering positive money mindset as self-care mm -hmm. too. But the quiet time with having been single over this last little while um, intentionally is it's allowed me to really hone my self-care. So I'll do what I need to do during the day, make sure that I fuel myself appropriately, go to the gym, move my body, come home, take a sauna, have a really high protein meal and relax and have fun. But it's the slowness that we kind of forget about. And in that slowness is where we can kind of um, explore more about ourselves. And the more we know, sort of how we operate attachment styles, how we respond in certain situations typically in the past, and maybe some adjustments that we can make when it comes time to be ready to move away from um, out of being single and in a, a very beautiful, secure, committed relationship, you are a better version, a higher vibe version, super key. I also want to just kind of give some attention to the guys here too. So with the post-it note, what that's going to do is allow you to accomplish your goals. And from the masculine perspective, thinking analytical, accomplishing goals is, is really important for guys. And when guys aren't accomplishing their goals, they kind of are a little bit like lost and floundering. And especially in the financial area, really important 
uh, for men to feel that they are actually able to provide value in that regard. So I, I, I wanted to kind of emphasize how important that is for men to kind of feel like they're the man and they're taking care of business and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Cause that fuels their masculinity. It fuels their testosterone, going to the gym, lifting heavy, all those things too. So guys have to pay attention to their testosterone and hormone levels too. Not just the ladies going through perimenopause, the guys have to too. Very common for guys after 35 to be on testosterone also. So there's that transition happening for men. And then the perimenopausal transition happening for women where the estrogen starts to drop. So this goes both ways, really for both men and women. So I'd love to hear from you, Valerie. Would you consider fostering a positive money mindset as self-care? Oh, one, what, 2,000, I don't know, how high can I go? A bajillion, is that a, it's not a, a bajillion, you know, percent. And, and that's where, when I talk about future planning, the sooner we start, the better. And so I, I feel teaching your children, but learning yourself and getting in touch with what your values are, especially if you've had a big transition in your life and you have this quiet time, you may find that the values that you've been living might not have been your own. Um, And that's really very common. So it's an opportunity, as you mentioned before, you couple up at some other point and enter a loving relationship to, to have this opportunity to, hey, what do I want to create? Who do I want to be? What is meaningful to me? And this all comes in line with boundaries. And boundaries are so important when it comes to money. Because money is energy. And if we leak our money, because everybody can use money, it doesn't matter what your socioeconomic background is, what your goals are, where you live. Everyone knows how to use it. So you have to be mindful of how you want to use money, how you want to be respectful of the money. So to me, it is the ultimate self-care. And I like to often describe it as when we build a house, we put a really good foundation in. We make sure that it doesn't crack, good foundation, and we put a really good roof. And then inside, everything's kind of can change. You know, you can, you can do a renovation. So being very mindful about your foundation, your money, is the best way to look after in your roof. It's the best way to look after yourself, your family going forward, whoever you draw in or call into your life or into your home. It is one of the most, I don't know, most kind giving things you can do for yourself. And it always bothered me, kind of my origin story was that client who had the tough time and me just assuming that because he was a gentleman and he was very well respected and he had accomplished so much, he really didn't know a lot about finances. So it's made me more aware and opened up that conversation of like, how are you looking after your money? Because let's do that first. And then you have the freedom to do what you want. It's discipline and it gives you the freedom. So definitely bajillion percent. (laughs) Yeah. And the other thing to touch on for self-care and the mindset around money is really being grateful for what you have, Mm -hmm. being grateful for each and everything of what you have and not having this grabby energy of, I want this, I want that for you to be happy. You have to be happy with yourself right now with exactly who you are. And it actually starts really with that foundation. So when we think of a house, we think of exactly what you just said, the concrete foundation, the walls, the framing, the roof. I mean, clearly I'm a carpenter's daughter, but we forget about, yes, my dad, Bert, is the best dad in the world. I love you, Dan. Um, But we forget about the geotechnical engineering side of things, the actual land that that home is constructed on. So as you gather listening to the show here, I take a very different perspective on lots of different things, which is why a number of you have said that you find this show really interesting, is because I think of things differently. And I would really say that where people get lost in life, when they go through transitions, they go way too off the deep end. 
with the spirituality kind of stuff. It's like they go and do an ayahuasca journey or go to Sedona to find God. <laughs> right. I, I see that a lot. And then they lose their grounding mm -hmm. in the financial side of things, which is key so that you can support yourself and you can work towards goals, whatever those goals may be, depending on where you're at. But the other thing here is I was providing some tech support for one of my members in the School of Radiance membership. We go very high level in this. She was like, why am I not making as much money this week? What's going on? And so we really did a bit of a deep dive with that. And I was able to kind of like identify a couple of key things that I think were getting in the way for her. And it was her energy. She wasn't sleeping as well. So when she was showing up to work, she wasn't making as much money because she was tired and she was having more short engagements with people. And a big part of what she does is engaging with people. So, but then once her vibe got right, she's like, Oh, I had, you know, had a really great day. So it does come down to your vibe and you'll notice this when you're making more money, you're kind of in this flow, you're attracting more money, whether you're in sales, you're making more deals, closing more clients, things like that. So just notice when things kind of are a little in flux up or down financially, maybe consider where is the energy going elsewhere to, right? So sometimes for me, that will happen when I put a lot of intention into a personal development. I'll notice a shift in income that month because my energy is going towards that. But in the big picture, in the long-term scheme of things, I've taken the time to be in peace so that I can then show up as my best version and provide more value. But first, I had to fill my cup up first, right? Fill that land in. Do that um, excavation that's necessary. Get what underneath that house and foundation solid so that if there's any little shakeup you're not going to get like liquefaction or anything like that which you know even if you have a great foundation it's not going to be great <laughs> so that you can survive an earthquake so that your house doesn't fall over or get blown over in a hurricane like there's so many things we have to think about and having our finances Having more of an awareness of our finances is really key so that you can do things that bring you joy, like activities and using great products and makeup and getting your hair done and doing some rejuvenation and, you know, being generous with what you have. But it first starts with you being grateful for what you have. Start there and then start to make positive motion in the direction of your goals. And you can even put, you know, a goal for the day of what you want to accomplish to generate more income in what you do on that doc post-it note that you mentioned. I, I love the gratitude piece because gratitude and faith are high, 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 high vibe. And it, it is so important to be aware of that and call it into your life, but be it as well. Yeah. And I mean, one of the lowest vibrational states is shame. So oftentimes when we're going through transitions and whatever they are, say we did something and we made a mistake with a decision, right? Or we responded in a way that wasn't balanced. And we would have responded if we were in a more peaceful, relaxed, clear, calm, calculated, grounded state. You might feel some shame or you might feel some regret. You're going to want to flow through that kind of as fast as possible. And I recommend actually channeling your inner hippie. Peace, love, and joy. Those are some of the three highest vibrations. And obviously, enlightenment is number one. But, uh, you know, people like Buddha, Jesus, they get there. I don't think I'm there yet, though. <laughs> but peace, love, and joy. Just really focus on that and not reinforcing with your words detrimental things. And when it comes to skin, it's like my acne or my headaches or my weight gain or my perimenopause or menopause or whatever, my divorce, right? It's almost like detaching yourself from that and be like, I'm experiencing this right now. And then you're going to be more able to flow through it because you're not actually reinforcing it into your identity. So I know that all sounds very philosophical, um, but I think that that's kind of a good framework to move through transitions because if you don't have these tools and a shakeup happens, 
how's your house going to be? Are you going to be able to withstand it? Because a key component to radiance is always being ready. So having your body on point, reducing oxidative stress with biohacking, keeping that toxic load as empty as possible. You've heard me talk a ton about that. If you want my 30 minute training, go to the school of radiance.com and watch my freebie 30 minute training on that. But you have to always be ready, keeping this toxic bucket empty and being, you know, mentally strong. And then there's the resilience piece too. So that when a shakeup happens, when a life transition happens, when a stressful event happens, which it will, how are you going to maintain your peace during that? Because if you don't, you're going to put weight on and you're going to age faster and you're likely going to respond to those who you love the most in a non-ideal way that you might feel that shame with or you might make really bad life decisions. So being ready, being resilient and always being radiant no matter what. It's almost like you have to hack that with putting your makeup on, doing your hair cute, putting on a cute outfit. That's, a, I think, a fun kind of like superficial 3D way to, you know, hack if you're having a bad day because people are going to engage with you and say, oh, you look great today. And then poof, you automatically feel better because someone just gave you words of affirmation of how great you look. And then you encourage them with your beauty and presence as well, even if you're going through a rough time. So I love that. Thank you. Um, the final piece here, because, you know, we go through stuff, say some of you are single or in a relationship, attraction, beauty, Mm -hmm. beauty is one of the highest vibration things out there. Notice the beauty around you, that beautiful tree or that beautiful flower or that beautiful nature view at the, the water, the water line, looking at the water, appreciating the beauty around us. So let's talk about this attraction piece and kind of building ourselves back up and getting ready to get out there. I love some of your tips around that, that type of transition as well, Valerie. Well, the thing too, if I look at it from, uh, we'll start with the finance part. You know, when you are a man or woman and you have perhaps, I'll, I'll just talk from going through a divorce or a breakup. When you have your financial house in order, you feel different. You have confidence. You're not better than anyone else, but you have, you carry yourself a little different. You have integrity. You have respect for your money, integrity for your money and where you're going. That's attractive. You might still have bills. That's not the problem, but they're up to date. You understand your money. You're that, that is, that's sexy people. That is sexy right there. Someone who has confidence and they take care of themselves. It does so, show a sense of maturity as well. A lot of our you know, maturity can show up in our bank account or lack of it. So that to me is so key. And then we talked about being grounded. Being grounded is so important because if, if something happens, like you, you were saying, Rachel, the way you react to something, you know, once you ring a doorbell, you can't unring it. So if you say something because you're feeling the feels of something, you you don't you can't take it back. So you become a, a person of of integrity, a respectful person, an empowered person, a person full of gratitude. That that's attractive. That is attractive. And then when you look at after your outside envelope or your meat suit, whatever you want to call it. I did a two week challenge. You said, Valerie, wash your face twice a day for two weeks. I have received compliments on my skin, you know, and I, I didn't do it twice a day before I, I, it's not been something I've been very good at, but I am now. So you start to take care of yourself and you show up different. That's attractive. Definitely. Yeah, it's been really funny dating. Um, One of the biggest things that I personally find very attractive in men is quiet confidence, calmness, peace, nervous system regulation. Mm -hmm. The same thing is going to go for the ladies if you're looking to become your most attractive state. This is really actually one thing that I have heard over and over again in this process of dating is you showed me how a woman can be 
which has inspired me to be a better man. Oh. And just your peace and positivity. And I've heard this over and over again. And why I think that emphasizing this from an attraction, attractiveness perspective is feminine radiance and also masculine radiance. It's rare these days and it's a bit of a lost art. And that's actually really kind of why I'm here. That's the why behind what I do is to help, help us become, help more of us become like this because you mentioned yin right? Very kind of feminine energy. And then there's the yang or yang yang, which is the more masculine energy, light, dark, left, right? This is how the word all, world operates in duality. So, but those are similar qualities in both the masculine and the feminine that make us more attractive, but really honing how we can show up as this beautiful, regulated, healthy, happy version of ourselves with our life in order with a high degree of intelligence, with the high degree of intentionality, with who and what we decide to spend our time on, being very calculated, being very discerning, having good boundaries, like you mentioned. These are actually things that I think make people more attractive than the way that they look. Because I've come across lots of men and women in my years of rejuvenation that had all the characteristic signs of aging. Fine lines, wrinkles, pigmentation, hooded upper eyelids, lower eye bags, but they just had this energy to them. It was the frequency in which they spoke, what it was like to hear them speak through kind of the intentions behind their words and also, and also their actions, like they're doing good things in their life with their families, going on trips, having hobbies, art, exercise, having a faith. These are all things that actually can make us um, more attractive than we realize. So do that stuff first and then add the icing on the cake, right? With the skincare, the makeup, the rejuvenation, because you can't out beautify from the superficial aspect, the inner stuff. Like you can't actually rejuvenate the inner stuff. It comes down to you. So for all of you tuning in here, you're kind of getting some things to get you thinking about ways of thinking and moving through life that you might not have thought about. So for those of you tuning in, I would love for you to check out the show notes to learn more about Valerie Sims and definitely register for her Hormone Harmony Summit that I, I'm really happy to have been on and been a part of. Valerie interviewed me. I shared some really key, very relevant things that I don't think I've shared anywhere else. So that's at hormoneharmonysummit.com. Absolutely register now, secure your spot. The Hormone Harmony Summit is a transformative free online event tailored for women to explore and address crucial concerns surrounding hormone health. Starting on November 21st, so it is happening very soon. We're getting this podcast out ASAP. This summit features insightful interviews with 10 expert women who share their knowledge and experience on achieving hormone balance and well-being. Each session is recorded, providing you with the flexibility to learn and grow in the comfort of your own home. This is the value of a summit at your own pace. It's a great opportunity to empower your health journey with a community united in wellness. Like-minded people, shared values, and Valerie, you're the angel behind all of this, getting this information out there. So thank you so much for what you do. And do you have any closing words for us here today? Listen, I, I feel that, you know, I, be, I have become the person that I needed 20 years ago. Everything I've done has been all put together and I'm able, this is my origin story. It's, it's why I'm here. Much like you, Rachel, it's why we do what we do it brings us so much joy and I want that for everybody. And, you know, please join the summit. We come at it from a holistic, spiritual and body, uh, the full circle, just like how Rachel views what, what you do with people and uh, with the biohacking and the skincare from the inside out. It's, so it's, it's just, it's just, it brings joy. It's joy. It makes life flow and it's easier. So thank you so much for having me on today to talk about my passion project. 
hundred percent. When you live your passion, it just fuels you because it brings you joy because you're of service, adding value to people. And you had to save yourself first. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The teachers often go through the hardest initiations. <laughs> the, <laughs> if you, as a teacher and a coach, we're constantly getting tested so mm-hmm. that we can continue to show up better, which is different from the learner who has kind of the exam pass the course, learn the information, things like that. So Valerie and I hold each other to a very different standard. <laughs> That's true. And we're, we're here for it. We're here to serve and support you. So thank you everyone for joining us here on the School of Radiance podcast. Love you all so much. Now you're going to take this information, share this episode with a loved one, maybe going through a hard time to encourage them and inspire them. And for all of your skin needs, head on over to theschoolofradiance.com where you can book your one-on-one, join my seasonal tutorials with one tutorial happening now, and also my membership. And you can purchase your skincare as well through the link. My skincare da, 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 is here. Always ready to skincare. You can pre-order now. There is a foaming cleanser. There's a fantastic eye cream. That, this is huge, um, that actually if you do a time lapse from when you put it on to about two, uh, three minutes later, you will actually see like visible tightening of your fine lines. Mm-hmm. And then there's a hyaluronic acid serum, carbon 60 serum, light moisturizer, heavy moisturizer, and a recovery spot cream, which I like to use on breakouts or like cuts and things like that. So that's available for pre-order. There is a big Black Friday event happening too. So this is a timely episode with the summit coming out. And just wanted to let you all know. So make sure you're on my newsletter. So that little pop-up over at the school of radiance.com, you're going to see a pop-up. That's where when you register for that, you're going to get first access to different events and promotions and how to uh, take advantage of that. Everyone on my newsletter is going to get first dibs. So if you're a longtime listener here on the show, you're not on my newsletter, the school of radiance.com and put your name and email in that pop up so that we can stay connected. I love you so much, Valerie. Excited to have you back on the show, probably in a couple months to continue for you to share what you do. I would love that. And thank you everybody so much for tuning in today and being part and letting me share. Yeah. And where can people continue to hang out with you and get to know you? Uh, My website, uh, masteryofbalance.com. That's where you can get in touch with me, send me a note. Um, I also have a website, uh, sorry, I also have a Facebook group. It's called the self-care society and you can go on Facebook and look for that. And I get on there and, and we chit chat and do all kinds of fun stuff as well. So grateful to have you here. Absolute pleasure and treat. As soon as I first engaged with you and you invited me to speak on your summit, I just could tell this is a woman I want to continue to get to know and spend more time with and support and serve one another with our mission, which is aligned to help everybody both look and feel their best. And yeah, finances is a part of that. Make sure that foundation under the foundation is right and that you can survive and not only survive, but thrive and be always ready, always resilient to be always radiant, no matter what. Love you all so much, and I'll see you all again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.